All right, guys, have to cry back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. The Vegas Legion drama continues. Last night, it was kicking off to a level we haven't really seen so far before, with Donny Temp coming at his coach in theory pretty hard indeed. Clayster was getting into the mix as well, and even Najot just a couple of days ago now saying that his opinion on the Vegas situation is that they, the way they talk to each other is not indicative of a successful team. But so far, they're still looking pretty good in scrims. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thanks very much indeed for doing that one. Firstly, this from Ralph Smalls. No idea if this is legit or not, but apparently Modern Warfare 2 is getting customizable kill cams. Now, um, I don't know even what to say about this, to be honest, because they could be focusing on other things in the game, but apparently they're not. You can select between either play of the game or a final kill. Kind of a cool idea, right, that you can choose what you want to see, but apparently you can, in addition, extensively edit the graphics, messages, audio, GIFs, and templates. You will legitimately, apparently, be able to replicate stuff like this in game. I don't know if this is what they're going for or like what the actual plan is here, but apparently it's possible to make the old MLG, Mountain Dew, Doritos, Quickscope type stuff for the, you know, I don't know what's even going on anymore. This is like such an OG Call of Duty thing and apparently Infinity would want to bring it back. I don't know if this is their intention with these customizational kill cams or whether it would make more sense to just focus attention on other things, but apparently this is happening. So yeah, congrats guys. We're not bringing the map editor anytime soon. We're bringing customizable kill cams, but it will create for some incredible memes. So I suppose we've got to take the positives where they come. One other positive we would like to see is ranked play. We don't really know what's happening here. We know that the mosh pit arrives in what, like two days, three days at this point on November the 16th. And then Treyarch have said in 2023, that's when ranked play arrives. So, well, we don't know if that's March, June, like, you know, whatever in 2023, they just say 2023. So hopefully Schmitty's right here and it's going to be January. But um, still, I don't know. It's good that we have a mosh pit, at least can play some CDL rule sets type stuff and still, Treg are carrying the competitive scene on their back as usual, so gotta respect it. Here are some Treg maps, two of these four maps here from Hitcher Treg ones. There's been a lot of talk about maps lately, just because earlier today we saw, could Crown Raceway actually return to the rotation? Will it not? Who knows? Of course, here's some maps. We've got Slums, we've got High Rise, we've got, um, you know, what is this map? For Resistance is this from Modern Warfare 3? Didn't play much of that game, to be honest. And then Firing Range, of course, what a legendary map. When it came back as Studio in Black Ops 2, man, that was absolutely fantastic. It was in Black Ops 4 as well, actually, because they they just keep loving to bring these maps back. And I thought this is funny from Hitch, right? So Roger comes back and looks at Summit, looks at Warhawk from Call of Duty Ghost, obviously. We've got Hunted here from Black Ops 3, Crash from COD 4 originally. And then we get the comparison to these maps we've had over the last few years. Arkloff Peak. Honestly, Arkloff Peak, in my opinion, gets a bad rep. I think it was a quality search and destroy map. Could have been better for respawns if they actually cut parts of the map off, because damn, it was way too big in places. Berlin last year, oh, I don't know, what to, I don't want to talk about it. Miami search and destroy, I mean, yeah, and then we've got the Hydro map. So yeah, man, these last couple of years have not been great compared to what we used to have. And we're probably gonna have to pay $70 in year two for this massive map pack where they drop all these maps in, which arguably should have come to the game already. And this just sums up this Hydro map. I actually can't believe we're gonna play this in competitive, but here we are. And this is the only option seemingly right now for the pros going into major one. As I say, if Crown Raceway does return, this map might be gone and they bring back the other one. But look what happens here, right? So Neptune's on the flank here on this Hydro map, it eventually gets his kill up against uh, Seattle. So this is our loss Angeles Squillers versus Seattle Scrims. Neptune goes in the water here, and then this other lad gets in the water on the other side. Like, um, this is accuracy. Neptune swims above him, and, and accuracy swims below him, and they don't see each other. And then they just, like, they're both hitting the flanks at the same time. Like, I've never seen anything like that before. I don't know why the water needs to be so deep either. If you went back to, like, um, Black Ops 3, even Redwood, there was a small bit of water on Redwood, or Hunted is the same thing. There's no way you're ever going to swim under someone without noticing them. That's just not going to happen. So not really sure why it's a thing in this game, but, I mean, yeah, this map is apparently a competitive maps. That just shows where we are nowadays. Talking about GAs real quick. This is the latest version 1.1 GA restrictions. The SAE kill streak, as we saw yesterday, gone. This is what they're now using on the barrel. So basically the idea was a few days ago, the fast M4, as it was described, was ruining the meta because everyone was running ARs because you could use no barrel and that would effectively make your gun much quicker. They're now forcing the pros to use the high tower 20 barrel. And by doing that, it makes the AR slower. So you can't really get away with running like four of them on your team, basically. So now that apparently might make the M4 viable. We know that the pros of the AR pros in the GA discussion between themselves really want to keep the M4 as a viable weapon. They don't want to get rid of it. They don't want to have to use the scar or something. But um, for now, that's what's being used. And also no attachments on snipers is still a thing. So just the latest updates here, but there's more to come on that. Parasite, he was playing last night in, um, in the Challengers tournament. He was filling in for scraps, I believe, on what might be the London Academy. We shall see. He reckons get rid of the M4. Hopefully we don't shy away from season-introduced weapons 
happens if they're balanced, this meta blows. So right now it's just Vaznev, it's just M4, it's what we expect to be the case. But it would be really nice if there was another weapon that was actually viable. Parasat has been known in the past, the Ram 7, for example, back in Modern Warfare 2019, to bring other things in and try them out and see if they're viable. So we'll see if pros do that over time. They were quite slow adapting, honestly, to the M4 being the best gun in this game, I thought, anyway. So yeah, we'll see if they get rid of it over time. We saw what happened a few years ago back in a Cold War, of course, when the M4 was there and then it didn't take long before it was gone. Quick note on inside the game itself, you can go into the Call of Duty League section and I believe before this, like the Vegas, some of you guys pointed out to me that the Vegas Legion had Empire's logo for the Vegas Legion. They've now fixed that, but instead the top row is just all Dallas Empire, baby. So I guess long live the, the reign of the Empire or something and they're making the comeback. I don't know why they're even here. They're not even an organization anymore, but um, still, it's cool that we have the CDL tab. I just thought it was kind of funny and kind of confusing to be honest. Let's talk Vegas, baby, because man, there's been some drama within this camp the last few days, probably just because they stream it. This might happen in other camps as well, but just some of the things that are said here, like seems like there's not, not too many other teams can be talking behind the, behind the scenes like this, I'm sure. And of course, this is live on air because they've been streaming it, which is greatly appreciated from the community perspective. But um, you can understand why pros don't stream their practice when stuff like this is going on. At the same time, they could just mute the stream between maps, right, which might make more sense. But it turns out there's been some spicy stuff happening. The team is still good, though, like four and four against Optic last night. They beat Los Angeles Grillers in a scrim set four to three. Like they've been looking pretty damn good. But I have no idea really how, to be honest, based on what happens behind the scenes. Now, look, some teams can deal with this kind of conflict internally, but just the idea of this kind of respect discussion between the pros and between the coaching staff and, you know, the players is, well, raised into question right now. And even Nature reckons the respect between the players on the team might not necessarily be there. So as Clay says, last day of TwitchCon Vegas. So this is the last day they were streaming their practice. Now it's going to go off for the time being. And it's good to see the views that Clay has been getting. Really cool stuff because after last season, Clay went down to challenges, had a really tough time, made it back into the league this season. They're really happy that he's doing well and playing well, obviously. And also his stream is going well. So of course, part of this is going to be the fact that they're actually streaming practice. Other teams aren't, but still really cool stuff. But look, let me share a couple of clips here because man, this one from Dotty Tep is just hilarious. The way that he's talking to Coach Theory here. I mean, look, there's an argument to say that Theory is not always in the right. Like, just because he's the coach doesn't mean he's always right. But just the discussion here between Temp and Theory is like, damn, if that's what's happening behind the scenes in scrims and stuff, like I can't imagine what it was like last season within that camp. And also if that's the chemistry internally within this team, like how are they actually going to become a winning environment? I don't really know. It to you. Oh, Mis hell, Mr. Water, the Broken hear Hill. Broken Hill, bro. Like, he Mr. Got it, water bro. sound. Didn't hear it. Bro, I, but like, I'm bro, telling but you. Suck you. a f cock, dude. Put that on Reddit. This guy's <laughs> literally always on my f dick. Yeah, well, I linked you a sound, water sounds, and all right, bro, you I said didn't you hear it. it. I didn't hear it. Like, this guy said none positive all day. Mr. Liar, shut the f up. <laughs> yeah, you know what? exactly. Show your true colors. Yo, but like, so, yeah, like hold on. Colors, no, 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 let me, let me, let me talk. 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 Like, also on like the, what is it? P1, P2. P3, bro, we have three ARs P3. on the map, but we're not like, bro, going to the best AR spots. Like, so the players can and do joke around with each other, right? Like Prolute in this scrim drops seven kills, right? So he dropped a Doug Sensor Martinier up against FaZe and they lose this map, of course, 250 to 194. But still not the end of the world. They get over it, they laugh about it and they move on, go forwards. And we look, we know that Donny Temp is, is a hard slayer. This guy's been the damage dealer for several years at this point. I know that over the last few days, many people are turning on Temp and you can kind of understand why on some of these clips to say, yeah, this guy Temp just plays for kills, not a winning player because at the end of the day people are going to say well looks like Tim's got a pretty big ego in these clips that are coming out and this guy okay he won an online event in the York Sublanders home series a couple of years ago but in terms of lands like you know Tim's done no better than making finals in the last however many years he's been competing right so you know that's where the questions get raised about Temp. whether look if they drop Tim do they get better I don't think so to be honest I think that for some reason this kind of a uh, chemistry and culture internally between Temp and Clay actually can work when the team is succeeding if the team starts to not do so well like I think this is an explosion waiting to happen to be perfectly honest especially because the coach clearly doesn't have control of the situation that's not necessarily his fault but it also might be a discussion there between himself and the players that isn't necessarily ideal so that is one side of the story here also wanted to share the point of view from Nadeshot actually because Nadeshot reveals in a video I think it was like a Courage and Nadeshot show a few days ago where they introduced It's Timmy to the team they were talking at the end about Call of Duty and Optic Gaming in those previous days and he mentions the Vegas team and he says 
says that he was watching their scrims on the second day of the game and the passive aggressiveness he heard in the tone between Clay and Temp, not even these comments we've just seen, that really sold to him that yeah, the communication within these teams is not particularly good and um, it's not going to work out well in the end. The biggest problem with communication, in my opinion, in competitive teams, it's not about who's right or wrong, it's the tone that people use. I'll give you the like I said, a perfect example. I was watching scrims the other day while I was eating my lunch and uh, Clayster and Temp are on a brand new team together. And I haven't said this and I got a lot of respect for those guys. Me and Clay won together and this has nothing to do with their talent or, or even personality. In Call of Duty specifically, and I'm sure it's like this in other games, this is the first, this is like the second day that this game has been out and they're scrimming. And if you go back and watch this VOD, it's the tone of the way that they're calling out and the way that they're talking to each other. It's dismissive, it's passive aggressive, and people don't realize in, in, until you mature that the only way that you're going to be able to communicate some, with somebody and get something out of them and vice versa is by talking to them like a human being. You know, it, it, it's really all about delivery when you want somebody to listen. It's the tone of your voice. It's the energy. And I think that's the biggest problem in competition. So Nate Shot does seem to be predicting there. And I think interesting comments really from Nate because he knows what it takes to be in a winning team. He won plenty of events back in his day. He knows what the issues were potentially arising within the Optic camp when he decided to step away in advanced warfare. And he immediately turned on the stream and heard the way that Clay and Tim were talking to each other and said it's not necessarily the content of the message. It's the message itself. It's the way in which it is delivered. It's the tone of voice that is used and just shows that he already thought that between Temp and Clayster it wasn't necessarily all sunshine and rainbows and um, and obviously like if he heard the comments between Temp and Theory I'm sure that would kind of back up his opinion there so yeah he seems to believe that this team is maybe not long for this world I don't know but the thing is if this team does start to fall short and internally it just completely goes wrong as it might to be honest like let's let's be honest here it could go wrong internally like what do you actually do because Temp has been the mainstay of that team for a couple of years now I don't know what the kind of who's the decision maker here at the end of the day have Vegas given in theory the power to make the calls and if they have then is he going to be like look Donnie I can't deal with this guy anymore he's got to go or is it the other way around do they listen to their star player effectively in Donnie Tim as they built around the last couple of seasons I do wonder what the relationship was like between these guys last season and what those other boys Jimbo and Johnny were thinking when they joined into this absolute disaster which might have been going on there behind the scenes maybe it's different this year or do Vegas as an organization say look Clay what do you want to do you're the franchise, well, not really the franchise guy, you know, you're the three time world champion, you make the calls. So, yeah, what happens here? I hope that Vegas are competitive. Like, I really want them to be competitive, but I think we knew going into the season that with this lineup of players, there's a chance that things don't work out. And clearly, the coach doesn't really have a good grip on how to deal with this type of stuff based on what we've seen before. Not necessarily saying theory's in the wrong, but it's like, damn, this tip guy is going to be hard to coach. I think that is just the way to put it for now. Quick couple of comments before we close out the video here. Firstly, here from Bance, I thought it was kind of funny talking about. I think Methods managed to, I think they were meant to scrim optic, then they didn't or something, and then the uh, Bants and the Minnesota Rocker guys got to scrim them instead, so I thought it was kind of strange. And with all the boxing stuff going on last night, I thought this is funny from TJ. My boxing career is going to be crazy. Who is your first match? Parasite says, I volunteer, says Slasher. So yeah, Slasher versus TJ in the ring. Not sure how that works in terms of weight category and everything, but they can, I'm sure, work it out. So yeah, I don't know. It's only a matter of time until these guys get involved in this type of stuff. It would be absolute comedy. I'm still looking for that formal versus crim six heavy heavyweight bout to be honest but uh, I'm not sure that's necessarily going to happen anytime soon but it would be good fun no doubt and just as we were talking about maps earlier like even this from Optic here 10 years later has COD ever had better maps than Black Ops 2 there's a few games I think that come close I mean Black Ops 3 maps there was some certain maps in more recent games but yeah delivering the goods honestly hijacked overrated map like in my opinion it's just Nuketown but with an underground it's not good bit of a hot take I know because hijacked is last but yeah in my opinion it's hijacked is nowhere close to these other maps on screen but definitely enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. Take care and I'll see you next time.